Christmas and imperfection go hand in hand. This Friday morning, for example, I guarantee that the gift open, opening experience will not be one of unilateral happiness. Someone will buy one a purple sweater. And the recipient will be thinking, why did he buy me purple? He knows that I hate purple. <laughs> Someone else will buy a size for a woman that is bigger than necessary. <laughs> Not always a popular move. <laughs> but things will go amiss way before Friday. The children, as they carol, won't always sing the right words. One child once was heard to sing about Santa. He's making a list, chicken and rice. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Deck the halls with Buddy Holly. <laughs> and my favorite, later on we'll perspire <laughs> as we dream by the fire. <laughs> Christmas is not about perfection. Did you hear the story about the woman who was trying to write her annual Christmas letter and it just wasn't happening? Her daughter was in the midst of a messy divorce, and she did not want to go there. Their son had recently been fired. That was not information she wanted to share. Her husband was having serious health problems, nothing of which he wanted disclosed. So finally, she decided to go the photo route instead. Well, she never got the time to get the families together. So at the last minute, Two days before Christmas, she rushed into Rite Aid, saw lots of boxes of one particular card design, bought them, and in a feverish pitch, she addressed them and mailed out over 100 to family and friends all over the country. Only after she had plunked them in the mailbox Basking in self-satisfaction, did she actually read the card's message? <laughs> she thought it was a nice, appropriate verse until she came to the last two lines, which read, This Christmas card is just to say, A little gift is on the way. <laughs> Christmas is that, yes, it's about joy, but it doesn't require perfection in order to happen. The tree can have a huge bare space which no decorations can fill. The kids and the in-laws don't all have to be present, nor do the grandchildren. And maybe someone you love more than anyone else in the world isn't here anymore. Bottom line, maybe due to your circumstances, you are not very happy right now. But that doesn't mean you need to skip Christmas and wait for another year. On the contrary, despite what popular songs might lead us to believe, feeling merry is not a prerequisite for Christmas joy. An overall state of well-being certainly wasn't essential for the first Christmas to take place. Listen to those opening words in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 5. In the days of King Herod of Judea. Right away, that tells us this was not a happy time in the history of Israel. Herod was a despot. Not only that, he was a murderer who didn't mind making even family members lie in their own cold blood. 
nationally, it was certainly not a happy time. Nor was it personally. Mary's situation I talked about last week. But it would not have been a happy time for Joseph either as he pondered the question of the baby's paternity. Who really is the father? Even their travel plans went askew. We know what that feels like. But most of the time, at least births take place where they're meant to happen, not in barns. The circumstances of that first Christmas were far from perfect. Yet it was precisely then that God, in the midst of misery, gave the deepest joy that our hearts and souls can contain. He didn't wait for times to get better. He didn't wait for the right set of circumstances. He chose to give glory in the darkness. Joy, right then and even right now. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people, whatever their circumstance. I am giving you a savior, a deliverer. What's interesting, I think, about joy is that most people think of it as an extension of happiness. In other words, joy to them is simply happiness at its highest level. But that's not it. And someone summarized the difference in this way. He said, happiness is human. It's based on our reaction to favorable situations. It's what we experience when life is turning out the way it should. But the problem is that when our fortunes reverse, when bad things do happen, then so goes our happiness. But joy, on the other hand, is divine. It's about who God is rather than about what we happen to be facing. In other words, we have happiness because of our circumstances, but we can have joy in spite of them. Joy comes when we accept God's offer to live beyond life's imperfections. And whether your life is messy right now or whether it isn't, the Savior, our Savior, is not afraid of imperfection. And the good news of Christmas is that there is no place that God will not go. There is no life where he will not enter. He comes to us regardless of whether we are or where we are or of any situation we might be in. He comes into our lives so that we can become more like him. And all that we have to do is to clear the space, to make way. Jesus' birth brought joy. His teachings brought joy. His resurrection brought joy. And that same joy is meant to be yours. Now, this Christmas. And that's why Jesus was given to us so that his joy may be in us and so that our joy may be complete. For in the words of Fra Giovanni, the gloom of the world is but a shadow. Behind it, yet within reach, is joy. There is radiance and glory in the darkness. Could we but see? And to see, we have only to look and then to make room. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.